I'm making up uh, some food to feed this cat, Jinx, who had a dorsal rhinotomy. So we took some tissue from the top of his nose and most cats need to be able to smell their food so that they eat. So we've placed a feeding tube so that we can feed Jinx adequately while he's healing and then we'll want to be able to eat by himself. So we calculate a feeding plan for, for the cat um, according to his body weight and also according to the food that we feed through the feeding tube. It's recovery, it's a diet rich in vitamins and minerals for animals that are recovering from surgery. So we weigh out how much we want the cat to have per feed and then we mix water with it and make it into a slurry so that it is capable of going through the feeding tube. And this is Jinx. Good boy, Jinx. I know. Come on. So Jinx is unable to breathe very well through his nose at the moment, so his sense of smell is not very good. Um, so he doesn't want to eat by himself as of yet. The feeding tube's going in yeah, through the side of his neck, under the bandage here, down his, into his esophagus and into his stomach. So we'll feed him through the feeding tube. So you attach your catheter tip to the feeding tube. This needs to be given over about five to ten minutes nice and slowly. Most patients tolerate it really well as long as you're doing it slowly. When you do a feeding plan we usually would start them at day one, which is only a third of the amount that they require per day. And you do that over six feeds a day. And on the second day, you change it to two thirds of the amount. And day three is the full amount. Um, if the patient hasn't been eating for a while, it's best not to just you know, give them the full amount. It's too much for them to take. If they get too much too quick, they can vomit. And then that can cause other problems like aspiration pneumonia and things like that. The feeding tubes, sometimes they can get clogged. So we, we need to flush it with water afterwards to make sure there's no food sitting in the tube so that it could get clogged. If it does get clogged, you can actually use Coke. It has to be real Coke, not Diet Coke or anything. And then the, yeah, the carbonation will help break down the, the food and flush it through the tube. When we place the tube, we take an X-ray to ensure that it's in the, same, in the right place. When we place a feeding tube, it always has to stay in for at least a week, even if they are eating by themselves. It allows us to make sure that he is eating. If he does stop eating, then the tube's already in and we don't have to anaesthetise him to place another one. We flush it with about 10 mils of water just to ensure there's no food sitting in the tube so that it won't get clogged. The infection risks with having a feeding tube is the point of entry into the neck. So it often regularly gets a bandage change and we clean around the, the point of entry. We'll clean yeah, it so now. cleaned it and now we're just going to rewrap it. Place a clean dressing on there to keep it clean. After that we're done. He'll go back to his owner. Good boy. Um, so I'll get you to keep an eye on him. If you think his sort of demeanor is decreasing and he seems a little bit more lethargic, mm -hmm. give me a call and we can yeah. have some more medication. Yeah.